Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a woman who is the author of the number one cookbook ever on Kickstarter. Her first book, Good and Cheap, Help People on a Budget. You're welcome, author of Good Enough, Leanne Brown. Hello, nice to be here. Leanne, let's go beyond the mic. The pandemic was hard on all of us. Stuck at home, stressed, and we had to eat. <laughs> How yeah. did you take this time to write and edit Good Enough? Well, I was lucky. I actually handed it in just before March of 2020. So there was a version that was already into my editor. And so then I was editing it through the pandemic, which, man, what a perspective change that was. And yet, on the other hand, it was also so kind of validating that this perspective of being compassionate to ourselves and allowing ourselves, frankly, to do less sometimes than our sort of perfectionistic fantasies would sometimes allow us is really, really important to just do what is good enough and to appreciate the care of what we are putting in rather than worrying so much about the result. I found myself feeling more like the message was really that much more important than ever for everybody uh, to hear. How did the pandemic change you and maybe the book as a whole? Oh my goodness. That's a, that's a heck of a question. I think that it, well, it changed me in the sense that I actually think I got way more comfortable with doing, uh, having like more of a rotation of meals that are just my go-tos rather than always trying to make something different and something really wonderful. I think I I finally lost this idea that like, if I didn't have a great dinner every night, something was wrong. I really held that sort of idea for the longest time. Like that was the pleasure I need to get in my life. And I began to find other ways to find pleasure and take it easy on myself in terms of dinner itself and just go like, you know what? (laughs) As long as we're all eating, that truly is enough. Because you know what? It's hard to find inspiration when you're stuck at home all the time. And with the amount of change and the amount of stress, it was there's something I began to to be interested in spending time with myself when I was cooking, Um, just relaxing and connecting and taking deep breaths and trying to let the stress go. Because the thing is, when you're at home all of the time, All of a sudden, that sort of separation when it's like the end of the workday and now we're into this other time doesn't exist. So how do we find ways to let go of that stress? And for me, a lot of the time it was taking deep breaths, going slowly, just trying to connect with the sort of lovely sensory experience of cooking. And I think that's really what got me through. And even, you know, the last few weeks as we've sort of, it felt like we were coming a little bit out of the pandemic and then the Omicron variant kind of hit and it hit at this time when my, you know, my book is coming out and I had all these events planned and they were all canceled. It's really helped me as I've been, you know, sharing with friends, oh my gosh, you know, everything's not working out how I'd hoped. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a good enough job. And my friends are going, man, you literally wrote the book about how you're doing enough. (laughs) And, uh, And I think you need to hear, you need to hear that message yourself. And it has helped. In your book, you tell some great stories, give the TLDR version of the recipe, and then straight to work. (laughs) How is food not only nourishing for our bodies, but for our soul? Gosh, well, I think the big thing is that it is every single time our body gives us like a, tells us, I'm hungry. That is a really important thing to listen to. And I think we get trained in our culture to kind of ignore that sometimes and go like, oh, I got to work through this. It's like tough. And I'm committed to my job and I'm, you know, to like power through lunch or something and ignore sort of our bodies, just like we might ignore when our bodies feel like back pain when we've been sitting too long or something like that. And so every time we choose to feed ourselves, and especially when we choose to take a little time and really make something that is for us, you know, that is to our specific taste that honors who we are and and our own life, that is this beautiful moment of like honoring yourself. It really, really is. And so that, and when we look at that, it doesn't matter, you know, what it looks like. If if it's like Instagram worthy, this like beautiful, perfect sourdough, the part that matters is your intention, your, your intention to take care of yourself and to listen to your body and to develop that trust with yourself so that your body knows that you're taking care of it. 
if we can do that more and more, we can begin to just spend more time feeling okay and not so sort of stressed and anxious and worried. And we bring all of that into the kitchen and then into our relationships and into our work and into all of that stuff. And if the kitchen and feeding ourselves can be a time to actually release those worries and to feel cared for in this really basic way, just feeding ourselves, that I think helps support us in the, all the rest of our lives. Author of Good Enough, Leanne Brown joins us beyond the mic. It's time for the Rocky Nate. Oh. Eight random questions answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Okay. Your favorite place to shop? Uh, the bodega. What meal do you make when you're happy? When I'm happy, cinnamon rolls. What is your favorite flower? Ooh. Oh, gosh. I don't know how to pronounce them. Like ranunculus? <laughs> They're kind of like these little flat roses, and they come in so many colors. They're beautiful. How about your biggest pet peeve? Um, uh, messy sheets, like crumbs in my sheets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was the best experience you had when you were a farm intern? Oh, um, oh my gosh, the incredible people I met and getting to be up. I'm not a morning person, but being up super early and like the dew on the fresh vegetables and the way that you could smell the vegetables and the soil in the morning. Ugh. Unbelievable. What music do you listen to while cooking? Ooh, I mean, to be honest, I've been listening to the, I have a four-year-old and we've been obsessed with the new Encanto soundtrack, the new Disney movie soundtrack. It's really good by Lin-Manuel. Nice. <laughs> Would you rather be in the kitchen prepping as an author for another cookbook or back into politics as a deputy campaign manager? Oh, definitely making food. I didn't think so. Oof, definitely. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in a year? Oh, hopefully just continuing to spread this help, this message of self-acceptance in the kitchen and hopefully seeing some people in person and cooking with them and getting to hug them. And yeah, I think teaching more classes and doing more talks and more in-person stuff. It's time for one big question with Leanne Brown, author of Good Enough Beyond the Mic. Leanne, you don't believe in celebrating yourself, but I'll celebrate your effort to help those who can't afford fancy cookbooks by putting your book, Good and Cheap, online for free download. Why was that so important for you? Well, that just felt like it had to be done. I mean, Good and Cheap was a cookbook for really for a budget that means that you can't afford a cookbook. Um, and so, it, but it was so important to me that everyone be able to access it and there'd be no barriers to, um, to receiving that information. If you wanted it, if you felt called to even look at it for a second, I wanted it to be possible to get it. So it had to be freely available. And then it was, we also, I was so lucky to have the support of my publisher workmen, so for every copy that we sold of the physical book, we also were able to donate one to someone who couldn't otherwise afford it. We worked with so many different nonprofits across the country to do that. Yeah, to me, that was just like, that was the follow through. That was what having integrity about that project looked like. She hates messy sheets, singing music from the movie Encanto, while cooking, and loves <laughs> to give back. Author of Good Enough, we thank Leanne Brown for taking the time to talk with us today. Aw, thank you. It was fun. Thanks, John. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic shortcut.